Gracious Master, we thank you and we bless you for, as we were talking about the history of our church, thank you for bringing this church from a long, long way, 79 years this year. We thank you for that. We bless you for all that we've been through. Look where we are today. And uh, you've done, you've done a good job with us, Lord. So we're grateful to you, grateful to you for this Bible study. As we went from Wednesday night to Wednesday in the middle of the day, those who are here today, we thank you for our writer of the book, Dr. Jeremiah, and we pray for him. Pray for our media ministry. Pray for those who are here today and those who will be listening. In the name of Jesus Christ, we say amen. The second part, minister started us off in the first part of the power of serving, and that is so important. There is something that's going to come up in there in just a few minutes. And uh, it's, 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 it gets to my heart uh, when I think about serving. And uh, I told Brother Matthew a while ago, I said, you, oh, he's, uh, is he auditioning to be an usher? He's no pastor, I'm just a servant. And this is what God is really looking for, uh, servers, servants, servers in the church. And most, most of us here today, uh, which I would consider the core group in our church, we are servants. We are servant. Amen? We are servant. Jesus' disciples, I think, were called servants before. And I want you to notice that when Jesus called his disciples, he called them. He called them. He drafted them. Okay? And the best thing about them is where we first start off with, they, 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 they were drafted, but they were willing to serve. And I want you to understand something else about the disciples. They left their occupation. They were gifted fishermen. They left their occupation. Matthew was a tax collector. He was an educated man who collected taxes. I like, like what C.L. Franklin used to say, that they would put the table, Sister Gloria, in the, the tax table in the middle of the road. So when you come to Jerusalem, you had to pass by the tax table. And Matthew was sitting at that table when Jesus passed by and he said, follow me. He said, follow me. And he left the table. They call it the table of receipt, but it was the tax table. So Matthew was a tax collector. I don't know. I know most of them were fishermen. I don't know what the, I don't know. I really like to wonder what, who, who, uh, 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 who's the traitor? Judas. I wonder, I wonder if Judas was a banker. <laughs> I'm just, Forgive me, bankers. Don't get upset with me. I wonder if he was a banker, but he was a thief. One thing, he might have been a professional thief. Ain't that something? We're going to get to see about diversity, that Christ got different people. The first thing we need to see is the prophet Isaiah. Here am I. Send me. In Isaiah uh, chapter, I, I'm sorry, I double it right there, chapter 6, verse 7 to eight, he said, yeah, and the people, there. let's go with Nehemiah 11 and 2. It says, and the people blessed all the men that willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. The key word in that, in that ver verse is willingly, okay? If you're going to be a, a server or a servant, you have to do it willingly, amen? Uh, Dr. Jeremiah says this. I love the passage in Isaiah 6, uh, but the king is about to bring that up, that we are... We noted in our chapter on worship, remembering that Isaiah knew he could not worship without confession. So the first verse said, and he laid it upon my, laid upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thou sins are purged. That's the first verse. The second one says, and also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who you want? Uh, send me. I'm going to go. And then said, I, here am I. The Lord asked him, who I'm going to send? And Jeremiah, Isaiah said, send me. If you need somebody, send me. And that, this, this brother stepped up. He, was, he stepped up and he volunteered. He was not drafted, but God was talking to him. 
And in other words, God was saying to him, and when he got, you get to the end of that sentence, it was not a question mark. It was not a period. It was an exclamation point. And he said, exclamation point, it says, I'm making a point, but I'm also asking a question. So God was saying, who, who am I going to send? But God was making a point. In other words, Isaiah, I'm talking to you. Amen. And I say, okay, Lord, since you're talking to me, uh, here am I. Send me. I'm going to go. Amen. Uh, 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 serving, serving the Lord, serving God to build his kingdom will not pay you the most money. And, and I know that myself. Amen. But nothing will give you more personal satisfaction than doing something special for the Lord. Amen? And I admire people that, that, that and, and, and I know members like this, you know, that serve in the church and do, do not, their mind is not on money. How much you going to pay me? But don't fool yourself. Brother Whistle told me one time, Rev, people ain't going to work for nothing now. You know, so you got to pay them. Amen? But Jeremiah, uh, 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 the, the Lord is looking for people who don't have to, will not put their mind on money. Remember what Jesus told people, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that other stuff will be added unto you. Amen? So if you got your mind on money, serve the Lord first. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek his righteousness. God's going to take care of the money part. Somebody help me here. You know, I tell my wife sometimes, I ain't worried about it. The Lord will make a way. And, 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 and he'll, he'll, he'll bless people's heart and bless their minds where they'll put their mind on what people are doing for them. And you're going to say, you know something, if the Lord done bless me so much, I can share what I got with, 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 with the pastor it shared with the member. Remember the Lord says now? Remember the household of God. Remember we talked about that, I think, last week? Remember the household of God first when it comes to giving. Remember the sisters and brothers that serve with you in church. And don't let them go without first. And then, then, then go see about the other people. Amen? Uh, 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 Nehemiah could not, could not give away houses to the people. And you remember, they were just coming back to Jerusalem now from captivity. And, you know, some of them had houses. Amen? Because Nehemiah said, look, how are you going to stay in the house? And the Lord's house is torn down. You know, Nehemiah and the other brother, you hear me? They says this, you know, we need to take care of the Lord's house. We need to build the walls of Jerusalem for protection. But we cannot just build uh, our houses, we need to build the Lord's house. I, I'll never forget that when I came back for Katrina that my deacons helped build, helped build, helped build, helped build the, the house of the Lord. I mean, helped build my house. Amen? And they were still, still in trailers. So I can't forget about my young deacons that I have in this church. They're not young anymore, but they were young then. You know, but they, they were helping me build my house Help me somebody before they got to build their own houses. And that that God has and guess what? God has blessed them since then. Not me. God did it. Amen. And, and that's a wonderful thing. Now, this is Nehemiah said, <clears throat> I cannot give you houses. But when he asked if there were any volunteers, guess what? They stepped up and volunteer. And they were in a hostile situation. At one time, they had to, had to have a sword and a hammer in each hand, which means that you had to fight. Come on, y'all. You had to fight while you building. Amen? The Hebrew, Hebrew word for volunteer means to have something impel you from within you, something from the inside that, 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 that pushes you to volunteer for the Lord. Amen? And I, I always say I admire ushers, I admire my deacons, I admire my choir members. Come on, y'all. I admire the teachers in this church who works and don't get paid. Y'all hear me, y'all? 
Uh, they volunteers, you know, when I got to deal with my choir members, man, my choir members sometimes get my hair a little gray. I'm getting a little bit here and a little bit there. Uh, my, my late pastor used to say, it can turn gray as long as it don't turn loose. <laughs> and my late pastor never went bald, so I figured I'm not going to get bald, amen. <laughs> and, 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 and sometimes they, they make my hair turn gray. Sometimes my deacons turn my hair gray. My ushers just as good as they can be. I can brag on y'all, Amen. Amen. But I admire them because they are the uh, uh, volunteers, volunteers, and working in the Lord's house. And and this is what this says. It says that the good news is that during this period of spiritual recess, reset, the awakening, thousands of people were impelled from the inside to do the work of the Lord. They were responding to God Himself. And let me tell you something, I'm going to say that, I'm going to hear me say it again. It ain't for me. You're not working for me. God is working through me. And what I was trying to say, son, that Mount Moriah, the apostle Paul said, you got a lot of teachers, but very few fathers who are guiding you and leading you. And the one father he had for Corinthian was Timothy. In which means he sent a pastor there to be fathers to us, amen, to lead and guide us and teach us. That's what fathers do. And to be presence there, amen, to be present there. I'm listening to one sister said that, 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 that this, the young sister was saying her husband died and nobody from the church and even the pastor didn't come see her, you know, didn't come see about her. You know, and I'm sitting there thinking that's what we are there for. The pastor, not only the pastor, but the membership, we need to see about one another. It's just something on the inside that's going to push us to see about somebody. Amen? Uh, 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 uh. So when we got that spiritual reset, we are doing it for God. We are responding not to people, but to God. Uh, uh, there is a huge blessing in volunteering, volunteering immediately when you hear a still, small voice on the inside of us. Go and do it. Go and volunteer from, for it. I know one pastor, when you come to him and you say, Pastor, this is a good idea that we ought to do. And he, he looks at them, he said, well, I tell you what, it is a good idea. As a matter of fact, you will be in charge of it. And I said, Lord, I said, Pastor, you're going to run some people. They're going to they keep their mouth closed around you. But that's a good thing. And you know, they, do you understand what's happening? That if God put it in your spirit, he's not only telling you to go share it with your pastor and get the approval from your pastor. He's actually talking to you. And, you know, and, once, and, and let me tell you something. I, I simply put that when he, when he talks to you, he's going to talk to your pastor. Amen? He's not going to skip your pastor and go talk to somebody else. He's not going to skip the leadership in the church and talk just to you. Amen? It is a, you're going to find out in just a little while, it's a unity thing. Amen? Uh, 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 when, when, when it is God's work, it is a privilege to be drafted. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> when it is God's work, it is a privilege when somebody drafts you. Amen. Even if it were not keen, if we were not keen, we were not keen to get involved. We didn't want to get involved, but you got drafted anyway. There was a huge blessing in voluntary immediately. I'm sorry. Let's go down to uh, uh, when. Let's talk about Jonah. Amen. Jonah was a reluctant preacher. You know what made him reluctant? One thing he knew, Sister Carlini, is the fact is that God will bless people. God told him to go preach to Nineveh. Nineveh had not been nice to God's people. Amen? They were their enemy. But yet God told him, go preach to Nineveh, that great city. And that was a great city. And he told him, preach to them and tell them to repent. And, and, and Jonah said, Lord, if I do that, I know you. <laughs> watch, it, watch this. He said, I know you. You can change people's hearts. He said, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. He said, because if they change, you're going to bless them. If they change from what they were, you're going to bless them. Jonathan said, oh, no. He was reluctant even after God drafted him. He didn't have the right attitude. Lord have mercy. Somebody better put a big old circle around that word. Didn't have the right 
attitude. And I know he had an attitude, but the right attitude. Amen? He was not a good volunteer. <laughs> he was not, but yet and still, God used him. Yet and still, more accurately, Jonah and the big fish instead of Jonah on the whale. Nobody said it was a whale. Sister, Sister Sim, did you ever see it was a whale? He never said it was a whale. He said it was a big fish. And, and, and God called Jonah to preach to Nineveh. And, and, and the last thing you hear from Jonah, here am I, send me. Jonah said, no, uh-uh. He went the other way. How many of us know you can't run and you can't hide? The Lord will find you even in the belly of the whale. Je now, I'm going to tell you, can I, can I t stick a pen in something? Jonah prayed where? In the belly of the whale at the bottom of the water. Come on, y'all. And God still heard him. Don't tell me God is not everywhere. If he's not everywhere, he sure can hear good. <laughs> Come on, y'all. He sure can hear good because he heard Jonah in the belly of the whale at the bottom. And Jonah said, look, I'm not, in, I'm not, the bottom of the, I'm not at the bottom of the ocean. I'm in hell. Jonah said, from out of the belly of hell have I cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard me. God is not just looking for those who are willing to say yes when the pressure is on, but those God is looking for those who are willing to say, with, with, uh, here am I. Even when there is pressure and when there is no pressure, Lord, send me. Amen? The second thing we need to know, a diversity of people united in purpose. Romans 1, 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren. Y'all know that one, huh? By the mercy of God that you do what? Present your body as a what? Not when you're dead. Not, and not only should it be a living sacrifice, but it got to be holy. It's got to be acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable servant. Servant, servant. come on, servant. Amen. Amen. Do I have another one, Brother King? Be, 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 it is the be not what? Conform. Get out of that world. But be ye moved without changing place. Transform mean I change, but I'm still in the same place. It didn't, it didn't say transportation. Transportation mean I move to another place. But it says transform, which means I change, but I'm still in the same place. By the renewing of what? It's all, in, it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind that ye may prove what is good and and the will of God. Amen? So, so here, here we go. If you read chapter 11 of Nehemiah, you're going to discover there were different kind of people. Amen. Educated, uneducated. Come on, y'all. Ser some servants and some rich people, some poor people that were different people. And that's what we got in our church. A diverse community of God's people. Every one of them was needed just as you are needed in the church. Amen? A diversity. And if America could get in their head talking about making Mer America great again, someone asked the question, when was America great? America was great from the beginning. And one thing that made America great is diversity. Different people, different races, different culture. Amen, somebody? That's what made us great, and we ought to not run from that diversity. Amen? We need that the diversity to make us great. A amen? We was a quiet nation going about our business until Japan uh, uh, attacked us. And boy, I'm going to tell you about America. We can't stand one another. We don't like each other, but don't attack us. It is then that we come together and we will fight as one. And this is what, what, what the, the church people is about. Amen? Amen? Service will be a blessing to you, but ultimately, ultimately service is about God. Look to, at, at the sequence Paul presents to us. Anything we have and can do is based on God's mercy. We ought to offer everything we have and all that we are, we ought to be to present our what? Entire body. Guess what? It all belongs to the Lord. Don't you quote that scripture and just say that the silver and the gold belong to him. 
What else is on the mountain? Man is too. Woman is too. It all belongs to God. God made man and he made woman. He did that. Amen. He made man from the dust. And then from, from uh, one man, you, you, ought to, you ought to bless the Lord because, because we were made from dust and you was made from a human, ba- a human body. So you was not made from, actually indirectly made from dust, but not, not directly, but man was. Amen? And that's why he says, from dust you came, dust shall you return. Amen? We, we ought to offer everything we have and all that we are, we ought to present our whole bodies. I think Paul is describing an incredible spiritual reset that has empowered us through service. You will find in that 11th chapter, you're going to find leaders, managers who knew how to organize, help me y'all, to delegate work. There were those who had holy tasks. Their job was to pray and intercede for others. Amen? Amen? This spiritual reset you all on, on might be because someone have been lifting your name up to God. Amen? Do you ever wonder how things come out the blue? It didn't come out the blue. Somebody put your name before God. That's some shouting stuff right there. That ought to make you pick your head up. That ought to make you say, look, I'm going to make it because somebody is praying for me. I I was praying this morning. I said, Lord, look to my members. Uh, I said, you've been good to them, but there are some things that they are going through. I said, look to them. Now, some of of them I don't know about. Some I do know about, but you know everything. I said, look in on them. Look look in on them. Somebody is calling your name. Now, sometimes I can't call all of your name out. All of your names are. Sometimes the Spirit of God just tells me what name to call, who to call. But I always put it all together. And like Jesus says, all of them that are coming after my disciples, I pray for them also. Amen? The spiritual reset, the spiritual reset. Now watch this. He said that, that one of the most powerful spiritual dynamics we discover in Nehemiah 11 is that within the diversity of gifts background, style, task, there is a unity of purpose. Now, you can think of a scripture just like that on top of your head when we talk about the diversity of gifts, that the Lord gives many gifts. That's one of the, one of the verses. One of the verses. Some teachers, come on, y'all. Some pastors, come on. He gives many gifts, and that's what he's talking about right there. Let me encourage you to be yourself in service and ministry. That's one thing that made me, made me want to shout be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. God want to use you to be yourself. Amen? I, I, uh, Sister Sim, I like to li- listen to those preachers preach. I admire these brothers and, and these sisters that can really preach and teach. But I can't do it like them because I only can be myself. Amen? Uh, uh, Dr. Pa- Pastor Earl, uh, uh, he says, he says uh, uh, he's the second vice president now, uh, he, pre- he say, uh, uh, somebody help me. He'd be talking about me because he's the only one that hears me say that in a sermon. And he always teases me, somebody help me. <laughs> you know, and he said, love to hear you say that in your sermon. You know, I can study other preachers. I can study other teachers. Amen? But I cannot be like them because I have to be myself. Amen? As a matter of fact, when I try to be like them, it, does, it, it, it will not sound right because it's not coming from me, especially my members because they know me better than other people know me. Amen? Uh, some, some of my members say, Pastor, when you go to another church, you'll be showing off. <laughs> In fact, somebody told me that Sunday where she at. <laughs> and, 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 and it's just, it's just, okay, it's just a different, it's just a different situation, amen? Because when I'm at Law Street, I got to not only be Reverend RV, I got to be Reverend Pastor RV, <laughs> Reverend Pastor Teacher RV in Law Street, amen? Uh, 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 let, uh, uh, so, 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 so God created you and has given you a personal gift to to build a church 
and to reach the lost. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? Different people with different abilities and gifts working together as a single unit. Let me cover the last one. I got five more minutes. Uh, uh, the church needs you. Hebrews 6 and 10. I hope I got that one right, Brother King. Hebrews 6 and 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints, and you do minister. Amen. Amen. Do ministry. Amen. If, look what I put down there when, 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 when watch this. First, a rebuke. When you turn down opportunities to serve, you are not only cheating yourself out of the blessings of oneness with your brothers and sisters, you are keeping the body from functioning as a wholeness. And when I first started reading that, it was going to say that you miss out on your blessing. No, you miss out on the blessing of oneness, of togetherness, because that's what God wants for his church. He don't want to separate it. Amen? You, know, you ever wonder why we got so many churches? Hmm? Because people can't get along in the church. So they go that way and start another church. They go here and go, go to another church and go to another church. To not, go, not changing church to church, but I'm talking about those who go and start another church. Amen? Uh, uh, and, 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 and I'm one, one pastor, I know him, uh, a good preacher, good singer, good, good play the organ, all of that. He told me, he said, he, said, uh, uh, he called me Johnny. Johnny? When I, when, when, when I break away, I'm going to start my own church. And he said, I'm going to call it the name. And exactly, he told me the name. And you know when he left from around us, he started his own church and named that church, <laughs> that same name. He, I don't want to say the name of it. He named that church. And he still, he left from one building to another and still got that name. Amen. So he was determined to start his own church, he was determined. He even had the name of his church exactly how he wanted it. And you know something? I did not criticize him. I love him like a brother. When he called me to preach at that church, I went. You know, I, lo I still love him, still love him as a brother and admire him. That that was his vision. Amen? And I, and I just held on to the vision that God going to put me at an established church. Amen? And God did that. I remember my wife and I said, let's go look at that uh, Law Street Baptist Church. And we drove here and parked right in that driveway right there. And I said, oh, my God, that's a big building. And I said, Jesus, that looked like that's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> you know, if the Lord would call me to this building, because I had not been called yet. Amen? Uh, uh, it, it is nothing but, it, let me tell you something, y'all. It's nothing but God. Amen? Amen? Because if it was not God, Sister Colleen, you would have thrown me out here on my tail a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. 27 years? It's got to be God. Amen? And, and let, let, let me add this. 27 years and I still got my right mind. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Amen. I'm not crazy. My health, not like what it used to be, but it's still good. Amen. My mind is still good. Amen. Uh, and watch this. Anything God wants done. Come on, y'all. I want y'all to catch this, and I'm going to take my time. Anything God wants done, he can do it without the help of who? Any of us. One preacher said it the other day. Yeah, the president of our state convention said, uh, God doesn't need you. We need him. Amen? Did he not say if you don't praise him, the rocks, let me tell you something, not only will the rocks cry out, the rocks going to do your job. Come on, y'all. <laughs> y'all never, never heard that before. <laughs> uh, but the rocks got names. The rocks got legs. The rocks got me. I'm, saying, I'm talking about another person. Amen? Service is not a burden. Can I say that again? Yeah. See, y'all don't know y'all late, y'all state president from Ele Reverend Alexander from, from uh, late Charles. He just said that five times. Service is not a burden. 
Service is not a burden. <laughs> he just said it again. Service is not a burden. Make sure you catch it. Like ministers say, I'm going to say it until you, until you respond to it. Huh? Service is a blessing. I, Dr. Alexander, come on. Service is a blessing. It's not a burden. It's a blessing. Do not let your blessing, here we go, slip through your hands. Be like Isaiah. Here am I. Send me. And watch this one. This one is heavy. If nobody notice your work, somebody in heaven it does and is thankful for your effort on behalf of his name and his people. The angels is celebrating what you do. And, and nobody got to notice. Oh, nobody, nobody know what I notice, what I do in church. I, I try so hard. I work so hard. And they still don't say nothing about what I do. Amen. There are people like that in the church. All the pastor didn't know. He didn't say, he didn't call my name out in church. Hey, y'all, I'm doing the best I can. Help me, y'all. My, my mind is not insane, but it's not, come on here. It, I, I forget things. My wife say, write it down. I'll write a whole list down, and guess what? I still forget with a list in the front of me. Huh? So I will, I want to recognize you. Huh? Charge, it, charge it where y'all to, <laughs> and don't charge it to. That people mean that when they say that. They say, I'm going to forget you. Amen. Are you, are you ready to keep growing and grow deeper in your spiritual life? And are you still committed for a re spiritual reset? Amen. Then get busy and see what God needs done. Amen. 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 If you're ready for a spiritual uh, reset, get busy. Amen. Amen. I don't know what time I start, but I know my 30 minutes should be up. Uh, uh, but, but if you are ready for a spiritual reset, then what you got to do? Get busy. Amen? Get busy. There is work to do in Lost Street. I'm going to finish with this. When the woman at the well, my favorite character, when she went back to the city, she told everybody, come see a man. Amen? That told me everything. Now watch what happened. They, they, they came running to the well to see Jesus. Amen? And when Jesus saw them coming, now this is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. He was fascinated with what he saw. He turned to his disciples. He says, the harvest, look at it. He said, look, look, look. The harvest is great, but the what? The labors are what? Few. He says, pray to the Lord, which is the Father, of the harvest to sin more workers. So what I say to you today, you need to answer that prayer and volunteer to be a laborer in the harvest. Because the Lord, the Lord wants you. He, don't, he doesn't need you, but he wants you to volunteer to be a laborer in the house of the Lord. And guess what? Law Street don't have enough money to pay you, so don't, don't be looking. Come on, yeah. <laughs> We, 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 we just ain't got it. <laughs> Amen. If we start paying everybody in church, what's going to happen? We really going to go broke. <laughs> Amen. And, and we got to an answer to the Lord. He said, I didn't tell you to pay everybody. Hmm? He said, there were volunteers. God bless you. There is a blessing. Serving is not a burden, but serving is a blessing. Amen. Those of you who are listening to us on the outside, I got to say and this, we, we, con we continually are being blessed in this church, and we are working hard. Uh, but we cannot complete the work or keep doing the work without the kind of financial assistance that we need. Every work in this country needs financial assistance. So we are employing you, we are asking you, please, sir, please, ma'am, if it is on your heart to bless this church and you're not a member, to bless this ministry, continue to do that because it costs money for all that we do in this church. Amen? God bless you and God keep you. Uh, and this is what? I love you with the love of God. Amen? Amen? And amen.